this is Praxis and I'm back on site today, just myself. There is an ice storm going on outside, but we have not lost power here, so I'm able to still use all the power tools. I could make do using hand tools, but the power tools uh, tend to make much cleaner cuts, especially on things like a table saw if you need to rip the whole board down. So I'm glad that I still have the power going on. What I've been working on today is uh, I got the floor in here finished up yesterday. Remember I was putting down all those plywood pieces and I put a ton, uh, not literally, of screws into there to really hold it down. That wherever there were places where when I walked on it the plywood was kind of bumping a little bit, I was putting in screws. And I was putting in the longest screws that I could without, you know, with being conscious of the fact that I didn't want them to go all the way through and then poke out through the boards below because, uh, you know, you may, you may see some of that stuff from downstairs. Some of the, the screws in some areas that were particularly, you know, prone to wobble, I have screws, you know, just a couple inches from each other. You know, you can't put in too many screws on that surface. To, you really want that to be nice and solid if you're going to be holding the tile together. But anyway, I got that finished yesterday and today I've been working on, like I said, wanting to use up materials and I'm boarding up the wall here. Uh, you can kind of see the defined space of what's going to be the bathroom and I'm putting these wall boards up here. I put a little bit of a trim piece here to kind of cover up the end grains. That's just an aesthetic thing. I mean, there's nothing technically wrong with end grain, just most people think it looks a little bit unfinished to have the end grain showing. I'm one of those people as well, so I like to put a little trim up. As the boards go up, once they go past where these floor joists are going to be, I wouldn't have these posts to nail them to anymore. So I've got these little uh, nailers that I put on the inside. I just did a little 45 degree angle, just again, aesthetically. I could have chopped them at you know, just a 90, but I decided to do like a little bit of a taper there just to make them look a little nicer. From this side, you won't see them. Boards are going to go all the way up to the top. And I am going to have to put a nailer uh, horizontally between those two so that the top board can kind of nail in there. Uh, but from the inside of the bathroom, you will be able to see them, so I wanted to make them look kind of nice. Uh, as you can see beneath you, there's a big hole. And uh, some people have been asking about why do I have a hole in the floor, hole in the ceiling? Why is there this huge open space uh, in there? Uh, you know, do, is, do I have something planned? Is that ha having to do with the sustainability of the house? I'm going to address those questions, not today, but I wanted to let you know I am going to be getting to that. Once I kind of get this area open, I'm going to talk about some of the features of having this large open space, why I decided to do it, why I made it the size that I did, and why I positioned it where I did in the house. But for the rest of the day today, just finishing this stuff up, uh, I'm, then I'm going to work on this wall here. Again, my goal is to try to use up as many of these boards as I can so that later on, once we we get the slab poured downstairs and I start taking all these boards and sliding them down into that area so I can do carpentry up here, I have fewer boards to move. You know, whenever you can just move a board from where it is right into use instead of moving it to another place, to another place, to another place, and then finally using it, you're just saving work there and you're getting more efficiency out of the work that you are putting in. That's it. Thanks for watching.